Hello, hello family. This is Angela here. And uh, even as we celebrate Good Friday today, I would be pushing into the 31st, the 31st part of our of our prior and uh, reading of Proverbs. But you know, I have to do that a little later as I I felt led to just leave a testimony, you know, because it's Good Friday and as believers, we are celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And my testimony is to just give you a little summary of why, why I have became a believer and uh, you know just to just encourage you from my perspective it has been a struggle you know to actually reach to this point it wasn't anything planned i was pushing into making the video our 31st part of that video and then you know there's a struggle to make a video giving a testimony even as today is good friday it's not only just to come and quote a scripture but to really give a little summary, a testimony of what has Christ done for me. We, we, we celebrate his death and resurrection every year, but I just want to relate a testimony of what his death has done for me and the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, what it has done in what it has done in my life and even to be here sharing with you guys at this moment you know the whole process in a short you know a short testimony and i just i want to welcome you to the channel thank you for your support your support um it's it's it has been a journey you know, being on YouTube for two years, the struggles are real. You know, you still go through the many difficulties and trying to have your head above water. And when I say have my head above water, it's like the daily trials that comes your way and how to just use the word to persevere as you go along. Now, you know... I will start out this video in, in saying, in the, with, with this testimony, in saying that what has brought me to be in this place of believing on the word is being at that, that place where, you know, when I was small, I was baptized when I was small because you know being in a family setting wherein you see the different persons they are they are going to church they are going to church and stuff and you know I, from i was small and have since i kind of feel like you know i want to i want to be a believer because i don't want christ to come and i'm not a believer i don't i don't i want to go to heaven so my whole thing was i want to go to heaven i want to go to heaven so i want to make sure that i am baptized but being being small and baptized and then you grow up i grow i i grow up and in my teen i have my daughter you know getting pregnant with my daughter and then you know trying to raise her in the right way that push to go back to go back to being focused on christ was that my daughter got sick and um i think the lord just let it dawn on me that i have to go into that this part now because when you look around you there's not much hope you know everything just seems like it's just falling into pieces her being sick and uh, you know you having financial difficulties and 
all sorts of different things and at the point you know i think i've said it before wherein you live in in your <laughs> in your partner's house so i was living in my partner's house then then and um you know that you have to you have to do something what is it that you're gonna do you know and i felt like the only hope i have then was to just commend my life to the lord you know put my life back in the hands of the lord and start to have that journey with him you know and i thought about it and in my daughter's sickness having her just fainting constantly and passing out and all of that and uh, you know i reached to that point that i think i should get baptized so can you imagine you're getting baptized in a house wherein wherein um you have a relationship where will you go from there even though my boyfriend at the time then he wasn't living in jamaica you know you still you still want to actually reach to that point wherein it's like you're thinking about so many different things coming into your head and the main the main thing is that you want a daughter to get be, to be better so you know going back to the, the the death of christ and this is good friday you know relating the power of god in my life that i wanted to see this power work in my life so i don't want to just be here to quote the scriptures but how does the power of god the resurrection of christ work in my life i have gotten baptized over and then i started to pray for my daughter myself you know i started to do my own prayers my own fasting and seeking the presence of god in in a way that you know it's just focus like when jesus said he set his face towards jerusalem that focus that drive and i bought a study bible and that was my friend you know that was that study bible was my friend that one and i have a new one you know that one i may not be using it now but i still store it i still have it because it's all tattered it's all torn in pieces and the journey have been something that i wouldn't give it up for anything it's it, it is a treasure within my head right at this moment and i would encourage anyone at this point i would encourage you that the power of god is real the power of god is real and you can't lose out on the power of god and for this i'm not just gonna do a long video but i'm gonna try to to let it stop at 10 and then do another video continue it and i just want 10 minutes 10 minutes in this part one and then i have another part and next part two so that it don't have be a long straight video <clears throat> the power of god so i want to um, focus on on the resurrection power in my life and how does it work how does it work in my life because jesus has been risen many 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 years ago he has death he has died and have risen his death came many years ago his resurrection came many years ago what has the resurrection power been doing for me and my daughter what has that resurrection power has been doing for me and that's the question and that's why i i feel led that i must take on this good friday in this perspective you know how does it how does it work for me and how have I been coping since I have surrendered my heart to God to Christ the one that has given his life for us for us to have salvation a life of eternity what has what has it been for me how does it help me and how has it been helping me and helping my daughter and those that come in contact with me you know how 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 do i relate this to you right now how do i relate it to you 
you know and that's the whole thing at the end of the day you know how do i relate it what has god been doing in my life over the last couple of years and i would say I, I i thought that i want to cut the video but I, I, it's like i'm just gonna go on you know i'm gonna go on you know i would say i watch my daughter being sick i take her to many doctors right because that's the push to have been surrendered totally different from when I was small and get and gotten baptized in my small age in a young state. You know, how does it work in my daughter's life? My daughter was at that point of, of um, first form, you know, first form, second form, third form, going up. When she got sick, she was in third form, you know, and when I gave my life to the Lord, it's like I depended on the scripture so much. I depended on the scripture and I can say to somebody, this is my disclaimer that me, it is I trusting in God. What is your trust? Who do you trust in? And if you say you have been in the word and speak in the word and he hasn't seen it work for you well i don't know about you i know about me that being in the word what i listen to the holy spirit because we cannot always be praying and praying and not listening listening is vital when it comes to being in christ it's not only about praying it's not only about worshiping it's about listening what is the directive that god is giving you what kind of instruction that god is giving you as an individual and how can it help you along your journey and sometimes it's some simple instruction sometimes the lord will have me praying in the night you know getting up out of bed seeking the presence of god praying you understand worshiping there were there were a time when i don't pray about the situation anymore i just worship i use i use the word of god i use the word of god and as i said the resurrection power is real the resurrection power the word of god that we constantly go over each year and celebrate the death and resurrection. It's not just for us to be in church on Good Friday and screaming on top of our lungs and shouting and, and doing all sort of stuff, but our daily living. How does the resurrection power work in our lives each day? When we go to work, when we come home and we have family issues, when we are at work and we have work-related issues, when we are driving on the road, trust me, driving on the road takes another level of faith. It takes another level of faith. So how do we cope? You know, in the time of my daughter's sickness, how do I cope? I pray. I pray without ceasing. I worship. I didn't call Dicta Mahari. What I did was stand up and listen what's the instruction for today and there are times when you get many different the instruction instruction coming to you what is the instruction that god is giving you as a believer where your marriage is concerned where your child is sick is concerned where your job is at stake is concerned your bad behavior what are the instruction i mean the death and resurrection of christ is to work in your life what are we celebrating what are we celebrating at this time we are celebrating and we are moving with the rituals we are moving with the rituals and we are quoting the scriptures but how does this scripture work in our life? How does it work in our circumstances? What have it been doing? Because the, the, the Bible said in Romans 8 and verse 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that quickened our mortal body. I've seen my daughter's foot twist. I've seen her eyes cast. Can you imagine you'll have your good child and nothing was wrong with her or him? 
or your spouse or any member of your family you know that they were fine and when you look their eyes the, the the darkness of the darkness that is in your eye is here right and and the foot they're twist in they're twist in like this what would you do what would you do having her just get up and just everything that she asks for the person is asking in another language that you don't know nothing of and when you call the elders of the church they're saying when you come to church the next sunday they can help you when they are calling them this sunday and you're saying to yourself what is it that god wants me to get from this situation how do i move forward now i'm exhausting this death of christ on this day to say is it to say and quote another scripture book my story what does it how does how can it help you how can my story help you and how can how can we constantly go over the scripture but at the same time every day we we have in the same situation for 10 years we have in the same life story our testimony has not changed since 10 years and going over the death and resurrection and the power of God. Romans 8 and verse 11 says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that quick in our mortal body. What has it been doing for you? This death and resurrection, has it changed your behavior? Your behavior that has been, you know, stuck that stuck behavior in unforgiveness that stuck behavior in 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 in, in bitterness that stuck behavior where you don't want to change that hatred and you go to church every day and you're easily puffed up come on man what about first corinthians 13 where the true love of christ is not puffed up is not boast it's not easily angered this is what we should be looking at in this death and resurrection. How does it work in our daily living? We want to have it work in our daily living. And as I mentioned, driving on the road, instead of cursing, I've, I've learned, I've learned, it's the Holy Spirit taught me that instead of getting so worked up, start to just worship, you know, on the world, because the road is something else. It brings a new level of faith to drive on the road, man. New level of faith. Dealing with persons these days, it takes a new level of faith. And God is saying in this time that we need to rely. We need to rely. We need to rely. On the power, the resurrection, the resurrection, the resurrection power. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that quicken our mortal body. We must pray in our home. Pray more in our home. Read the word of God in our home more. Read it in your kitchen. Read it in your bedroom. Read it in your bathroom. Read it in your washroom. Wherever you're living have moved 10 times 10 times in my life and i'm 46 and i've moved 10 times since i'm on my own from i'm 17 i've moved 10 times i've moved up and down and it's only god that has been keeping me he keeps me jesus is real jesus christ is real and that just as how it is said in Romans 8 and verse 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that quickened my mortal body. It's for real. I've experienced it. I can tell you about it. I can tell you about it. Everywhere I go and everywhere I work, they know that my thing is to walk in the power of God. And every day I learn. Every day I learn a new thing. When it comes to Christ. And when it comes to the power of God. I learn even more every day. So my focus today is. 
what has the death and resurrection been doing in your life you know and coming to christ you know how has it been how has the power been working in my life and what has it done i've seen it work for many persons i come in contact with i've seen it it has happened and i'm saying to someone today be encouraged in the lord because the power of god is real and the death and resurrection is real the power that raised that rolled away that big stone from that cave where jesus was laid and the power and his body being raised from the dead is that power is there to raise our circumstances to be not all the time our lives is going to be perfect being in christ but i can say to someone today that it's better to have the word of god working in your life working in your situation than not to have it any at all because bad things happen to me every day there are situations that i'm praying about that i'm still waiting on god to touch and to move on but there's still so many things that I can relate to you. I can praise God about because I know that he is the one that has done it and not me. And not I of myself because I am his vessel. And you are his vessel. You are his royal priesthood and a holy nation and a peculiar one. God has handpicked you. You're a promise. You're a possibility. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And I can tell you today that Jesus is real and the power of God is real. Instead of we just looking on him dying today, please let us look on his power, his resurrection power. And how can it work in our life and magnify him for what it has been doing already in your life. God bless you. God, peace be upon you. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that has been keeping me. Why don't you trust God today? Trust his word. His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Why don't you? Why don't you? God bless you. This is Angela. See, feel, and seal the vision that God has given out to you. Don't give up. Don't give in. Just keep pressing. Jesus loves you.